Afternoon guys, welcome down. Um, before I do more speaking, I think you guys deserve some playing here. Yeah? So I'll just head on to this track. Um, by the way, this track is a, a borrowed track from YouTube. But I just love the groove on this. Uh, my kind of feel good, feel good kind of uh, moment here. Hope you guys like it too.
que vais. <laughs> For those just walked in here, welcome down. And um, today I was uh, going to touch on topics about um, going digital, which is kind of unlike me. Um, and um, b before I head into that, uh, for those who are not familiar with me, um, my name is Paul Daniel. I've been playing the guitar for about 40 plus years now. Um, I started at the age of six. Uh, my background, my family, um, they, were, they were big into country music. You know, it's part of the Eurasian thing. And um, of course, rock and roll was... Uh, had a big impact in uh, my playing today, and um, just to cut the long—it's a long story. It's 40 years of uh, history going on, but I have um, played on uh, Asian Asian artists, about 25 albums, close to 30 albums up to date. Um, not all from Singapore, a um, couple from Mongolia, Taiwan. One in Bangkok, one from one artist from Japan, uh, two artists from Indonesia in the 90s. Uh, been blessed um, in this journey. Um, when I first started my first session work, um, it was still in a reel, three-inch uh, tape reel, something that's only uh, talked about today. <laughs> I, I think my first three sessions yeah, were done on reel. So I got a taste of that and I, it wasn't easy. It was a big uh, learning experience because when you walked in a studio back then with just reels running, your tuning had to be in, you had, you had to be in tune. You had to know your parts or else you got to start all the way from the top again. There's no like cut and paste and punch in. And there was not, not much room for that. Unlike uh, the... the Technology that followed through ADAT and um, so and so. So yeah, it was a good learning experience, and um, it was um, her dad and my my, my wife's father who uh, brought me into the session scene uh, at Raziam Studio. <laughs> at that time, we haven't met yet. I was working with your father. <laughs> <laughs> Months later, we met. Yeah, but um, just just for those who not not too familiar with my um, background and uh, how I came about and who's this Paul Daniel guy, you know, it's like oh, yeah. But uh, and me and Eddie, uh, we've been. I mean, I think our stars keep keep aligning together um, because we watch each other grow, and um, it's amazing to see to see his journey bloom. Um, but one thing we do have in common um, is that we, no matter how we were influenced by rock and roll and shredding and, and whatever kind of music that, that turns you on, we still found that the defining style of being an Asian guitar player, that, that's something that we really have in common. It's like no matter all, all the, the chops and all the syllabus coming from Europe or U.S., Berkeley, or MI, or whichever school. I think Marty Friedman was our defining moment, right? Because he brought the Asian thing back in the loop. And that, I think, inspired us to, to be Asian as much as we, we want to be... Yeah, okay. As much as we like to be um, virtu virtuosos, recognized um, by, by international people, but we still want to stay true to our... Uh, to our sound, which is the Asian sound. It's nice, uh, Eddie. Guys, any questions? Please share with us the digital thing that you're talking about. Good. I, All, all you need is actually your, your iPhone or your iPad um, or even an iPod, which I also have here. 
um, with with um, it's like you're you're having this array of like say tw twelve to twenty amplifier sounds available. Um, you you're able to achieve all this with a spending power of less than two hundred sing. So with less than two hundred sing, you can set set up set up yourself at home to an array of all these wonderful amplifiers. Right, and you are not being. Um, of course, there are there are more better versions that are on desktops, professional versions, meant for recording professional stuff. That's gonna cost you like two four nine US, three four nine US. But when I'm talking about like the basic cost of below two hundred sing, you and an, an iPad, you can have like a variety of, of tones to play with, and um, with modern tech. Garage band, even if you don't have a band, this is for, for those of you who don't have a band or struggling, or you have ideas you want to put down on demo, there's no limitation having this technology. You could try like um, MKit, there's a few, uh, few products MKit, uh, the Line 6 um, modelings, and the one that I'm using is Positive Grid. I've been using this about five years now, and um, I kind of like. I like the way um, it, it go. I, I wish I could turn this around and show you all the displays because I could actually customize how the M works. I could go into my, my Marshall head here and make it my own. I, I want a hotter tubes, what kind of tube tones, what kind of transformer. Um, if you really want to go into the technical side of things, it's like every M is customizable and becomes your own rather than um, oh I'm using a Keith Merrow or Ola England's model but I could take that thing bring it bring it to the to the buyer's um, app break it down customize it make it your own that's why I like positive grid I, I'm not representing them <laughs> they're not paying me <laughs> but uh, it is a good tool uh, it's a good tool um, for digital music especially for guitarists who wants many tones. Any, any questions? Follow up? The maple reminds me of ebony also. It's close. Because there's this um, highs, the clarity, right? Um, maple necks are closer to, to ebony. Just that ebony has, has a more defined spank. And then you hit. You can hear the spank. With ebony, you get more defined. And in, in, in some ways, on, on my PD, on my swing ebony, even if I miss the note half, right? It sounds like I hit kind of helps <laughs> Ebony next. Help you cheat. You, know? <laughs> you could like miss, like almost like a miss note and it, it sounds in the recording, it's okay. The note, the note is audible. Unlike, unlike uh, I think if Rosewood or Maple, if you miss, you play back your recording, you miss. <laughs> no cheat code. Yeah. <laughs> but um, good question because choice of woods actually um, help you define the kind of sound you want to go for. And um, if it's like me, I, I've been a big fan of Ebony Next. And I, I will definitely partner it with a mahogany body for the weight. And so you have the brightness there and the punch of the body. Something like the majesty. <laughs> I kept that soft. <laughs> no, but the configuration is good. It's a good configuration. But if you're going for something, say, um, mainstream, something more mainstream, you can go for an elder body and, of course, either maple or rosewood to, to suit your choice. You want more highs, you go maple. If you, if you like the warmth, go rosewood. Can't go wrong. Hope that clears. Thank you. Most welcome. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to play another track.
Thank you. I wish I could show you all this, this, this setup here. track for my um, graduation uh, open house at LaSalle. the first ever eight bar blues form to be uh, his historically recorded it's called the drinking god done by the slaves in uh, back in the US
Thank you. That was um, Follow the Drinking God, um, G O U R D. Um, it was a song from the slaves. Um, I think it's reco historically recorded around 1887 as the very first um, form of blues inspired by the, by the slavery. They were, they were singing this after their hours in the cotton fields and from the whippings and the torture. This was the very first blues song, sharing history with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Well, this reminds me when I was young, what did you ever know? <laughs> okay, anyway, I just want to ask you, how do you do that? Reverse play? It's crazy. Right. right? <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as, um, as um, I would like to share that actually. The story, um, the story behind it was uh, I had an incident with the health about five years back. You were at the hospital, Eddie. You came to see me. Yeah, almost died. Uh, I'm still, still alive now to talk about it. Still here. So when I was discharged at that point, um, it's like um, music is always the best therapy. Um, and when you're getting through life, uh, especially illnesses. So I told myself, uh, like, at this cycle of life, I, I'm like probably in, in the last cycle of it. So it's like, practice or play something that's impossible or, or do something that's beyond what you have done before. I mean, I was telling myself this when I, so I, was, when I was at home re recuperating and slowly re going through the rehab of recovery from the heart attack. Um, so I started practicing. Um I, what, what we would normally do on a... I just started turning it around and let my muscle memory start to absorb these new positions. And of course, uh, at that point in time, I was in a rock band. Every night, I get, I get a chance to improvise and make all the mistakes possible. And, and, it's, and it's from the mistakes, you know, you learn, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And, and I started finding like interesting things. Uh, hold on, let me go to something cleaner. And, and I, I started to start with like, So it's like, um, rather than just making it into a, a gimmick, which is, which is nice for club, People watching you and you're going there and you're like, wow, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the entertainment. But at the same time, um, I, I just started um, finding musical ideas inside it to make it presentable as well. Rather than just a club gimmick, make it something musical. So that's how it came about. Uh, it was from that, that downtime of uh, coming out of the hospital and, you know, relief being like blown away by a shotgun kind of feeling and just coming back and rehearsing the hell out of this. And, and then you can find like minor patterns, uh, pentatonic. Um, you can have uh, the mixolydian from, from, from this. It's, it's all actually available in almost every key, uh, almost. But you really got to work, work it. The next, next legend. Yes, yes. All right. This is important. This guy is important. Yeah. Any, any other questions? What do you advise for players who just started playing the guitar? That's not a question. Can you explain the more if if um if 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 you're if you're beginning right um. The, the, I think that the biggest opponent, opponent about the guitar is getting through the chords. Like, especially this bar chord. It's going to be hell initially. But once you get, get past this, the, the, the pain and the calluses start forming and you're, you're seasoned. Right? 
then then you can push on to something faster and faster you know? and play something that you like and listen to things that are within your capacity of playing for a start i mean it's it's nice to listen to steve vai and or gatri govan but if it's not within your playing um your set skill yet you can put it as a target you can put it as okay i want to reach there eventually but you got to start listening to stuff that you can play things that you can pick out it's like you listen to something on the radio and you're like i know that you're like it's a familiar it's a familiar lick so go with i i would suggest to go with familiar stuff but of course put that big target like gatri or petrucci or zvai and kodzen you know put them as your 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 long term goals but the short short term goals listen and start playing stuff that you play more actually play things that you can play so if it's like say um ed sheeran or or eagles or you know a lot of rhythm stuff go for it and yes uh, talk, talking about beginning guitar please strengthen your rhythm playing if you if you're new to the guitar strengthen your rhythm if you're a good rhythm player you'll be a great great lead player any time Mr. Jess. He was, he was, uh, right. Uh, the thing about rock and uh, blues, rock, heavy metal, there's a there's a, like an attitude, like a swag. There's that, there's this thing about it. If if you watch like Rolling Stones, you look at Mick Jagger, it's like swag on stage. There's a reason why, and that's why Keith Richards next to him is carrying, carrying the rhythm with him. It might sound simple, but to, to play this like for the, the duration of the song and keeping it there, keeping the groove with the singer, that's the challenge. That's why you need mileage of practicing and keeping your rhythm. Again, I, I will. strongly strongly uh, remind you guys a good rhythm player is a fantastic lead player <laughs> can be the blues <coughs> and can live can live without it um be, before um before we go for this break can i do one song yes for, for everyone Yes, yeah, we got and, and uh, this goes out to all the moms and future moms and those who have made it down happy mother's day. <laughs> this is a song I I wrote, I wrote for my wife.
Happy Mother's Day. Anyway, uh, as always, I know some of y'all have uh, wanted more out of Paul Daniels. And uh, so, with permission, got anything else to show them and inspire them through the uh, digital hints that they've always wanted to propose to our enthusiastic fans over here? Yeah, actually, for, for yeah, um, because they, they didn't, um, the questions. So, if you guys wa wanted to hear samples of the of the digital um, app that I'm running, right? Yeah. Okay. Set. So you heard the rock, um, the rock tone, and um, here's the clean sound, which obviously the digital will always be good. My favorite uh, simulations on digital is the Mesa Boogie rectifier, which is the So it's like, um, like I was saying, uh, for below 200 bucks, you have all these um, amazing amplifiers at, at your disposal to, to have fun with at home, to jot down your demos, to do your, put down ideas on GarageBand or Logic or whatever you're running. And uh, also the classic rock for those who are like, into the old school ACDC. 